I'm Andrea Klim from Turn to the Stars, and today I'm going to be doing a podcast of the uh, astrological influences of the full moon in Scorpio that's occurring on April 26 at 10.04 p.m. Eastern Daytime. And so you might need to adjust for the area you live in if your time is different than the Eastern Coast. Um, so I'm going to start out with the universal forecast for the full moon that's occurring on April 26 and I'm going to follow that with a horoscope for each of the astrology signs. So if you uh, don't know the rising sign in your chart, meaning the planet or the zodiac sign that's ruling your chart, you can go to my website turntothestars.com and on the menu choose create free birth chart and you can uh, put all your information in there and create your birth chart so you'll, you you will know what is on the horizon um, of the earth and of your birth chart meaning the ruler of your birth chart which is very much a huge part of your personality so that's what we're going to be doing today along with uh, animal spirit card nature wisdom so as I said earlier, the full moon that we are in the course of um, experiencing this energy grow every day is going to be in Scorpio at seven degrees of Scorpio. And Scorpio is a sign that brings um, a lot of emotion up. It's because it's a water sign. And it is a sign that is much more reserved but it also helps us, what's gonna be illuminated by this full moon is the ability to identify things that are not serving us, that are toxic, things that are not in our best interest. And Scorpio is really good. That energy really influences the ability for us to look deep within whatever it is that we are experiencing in the outside world. So a full moon is always opposite the sun. And uh, we've got a huge cluster of Taurus energy, which is opposite this full moon. We've got the sun, we've got Uranus, we've got Venus, and we've got Mercury. So what that means is that our health, our well-being, our vitality is changing at this time. Uranus is all about waking up to change in Taurus on this earth. Taurus is a material, a sign that uh, influences material things, money, our values, um, beauty, and Venus is the ruler of Taurus. So relationships are going to be very affected by this full moon. And Mercury, meaning Mercury is the planet that, that inspires conversation, communication, making decisions. And so whenever you have a stretch like we have with the full moon. It shows us things within ourselves, within other people that we were not aware of prior to this time. And on this full moon, there is a T-square that's forming to Saturn. And Saturn is in Aquarius and it's at 12 degrees. And this is a very powerful fixed square. And by that, I mean, there are going to be things that come up for each and every one of us as far as relationships goes, as far as feelings go, as what's best for the whole. This full moon in the universal chart is in the 11th house, which is the area or the arc, which influences friendships, groups, community types of events. So there's this level of awareness of what's happening all around us and the fixivity, how are we gonna change this? That's what Uranus brings up, change. Um, it, it really, in, you know, there's like this connection with the full moon that is really gonna, you know, we're gonna have some really um, sparking ideas, so to speak, or like lightning bolts of, of information or intuition um, that are gonna come up. And so the thing is with fixed T-squares, it shows up areas where we are stuck, areas where things um, have become very latent and very um, fixed, so to speak. 
And so if you have any planets in your chart that are between about five degrees to about nine degrees of any fixed sign, meaning Scorpio, Taurus, Aquarius, or Leo, you are going to have experiences that are um, really uh, highlighted by this full moon. Because that's what full moons do. They bring things to fruition. They bring things to full light. But we always have to be aware of the emotion that's attached to the feelings that are associated with the influences. And as you know, in the world right now, we have some very, very difficult things that are going on with civil unrest. And so, uh, you know, it's time for things to change. But there's so many people that are holding on to what was for fear of what they don't know. And so this universal full moon is really bringing up for all of us. Um, you know, everybody wants to be heard. Everybody wants to be noticed, to be recognized and to be respected. And so that is what is with Uranus right next to this, um, uh, to the sun on this full moon. It's almost like it's knocking on the door of earth saying, it's time for everyone to recognize what changes need to happen in order for us to move forward. So also we've had, um, we've had, you know, Mars is now in Cancer and it's actually trining this full moon. So that's good news. So Mars and, and the full moon are having a really nice conversation. And Mars in Cancer is a lot more reserved meaning actions, our actions are gonna be ones that are looking out for our families, looking out for people that need care, um, people that need nurturance. And that's primarily in our relationships and with our friends, with our communities, as I said earlier. Ideally, the most important thing for everybody in the world to stay focused on is the duality of relationships and that we hear each other. You know, sometimes when you're talking to somebody, you may feel like, you know, the conversation is one-sided and you're just listening. And it, it doesn't feel very good when you're not recognized. So it's really important that we each and every one of us be aware of each other and what we each have to say. That is where we're gonna find the most fulfillment, the most joy, the most happiness. The North Node of the Moon, we often call it the dragon's head or the direction we're meant to be focused on. So uh, this new moon, you know, on this full moon, the North Node of the Moon is in the seventh house and the South Node, meaning the past, is in Sagittarius. So there's so much going coming up in this world about belief systems meaning, um, you know, we were each brought up with a sense of values, a sense of beliefs. I was brought up Catholic and I respect and I appreciate all of that, but I know it doesn't work for me because um, primarily um, the beliefs that they have are not the ones that I've um, learned to uh, learn are best for me. And I believe that everybody um, that every religion, every belief system goes to one place. And, um, but whatever your belief is, whatever, whatever it is that you were taught or whatever it is that you've explored, this is a time to really get in touch with the truth, what your truth is, what it is that you understand about yourself, what it is that you believe in. This is a huge thing in the world right now. And this is actually connecting with the sun. Uh, the south node of the moon is connecting with the sun and Uranus um, and Venus and Mercury. And so what that indicates is there is the connection it's forming is called in conjunct, meaning um, there's a level of conflict and there's a level of adjustment that's going to be very important for each and every one of us in the areas of what our beliefs are, in the areas of the law, in the areas of spiritual understanding. So um, in order to resolve conflict, everyone needs to make adjustments unless, and if adjustments aren't made, that's when you have um, things happening like the civil unrest. So um, 
I'm going to pull an animal card here that is um, nature's wisdom. As you know, I'm a shamanic practitioner and um, have studied the healing arts of shamanism for many years. And I believe that nature has the wisdom that we need. And so any animal that passes in front of us or across our path has a message for us. So I'm going to pick a card, which is a universal message for everyone um, regarding this full moon in Scorpio. And I picked the, tor tor uh, the tortoise. And the tortoise message of the tortoise, and first of all, I'm going to say it's looking up to the heavens and um, looking up into the sunlight. And you can see the sun over on the side of the picture here. So the symbolism is... I think the message is for us to look up, to look up to the light. And the message is for all of us is that we are too fragmented. So we need to do whatever it takes for us to ground ourselves, for us to stay present, to be present in the moment. Very, very important because when we get caught up with doing this, doing that, doing everything that's running through our minds and our minds start to control us, that's when we fragment ourselves and we're not present for the gifts that are right in front of us right with us at that moment so the tortoise goes slow take your time call upon the wisdom that you carry that you've learned and um, you know um, one thing I want to say that about this chart is that we have some very powerful planets all in late degrees um, and that means that there is a lot of wisdom that we all have present for us right now. And Pluto is at 26 degrees of Capricorn. And so we've come a long way over the last, what, 12, 13 years uh, with Pluto in Capricorn. And it has transformed the very structures of our government, the structures of our world, the structures of business. And um, we also have Jupiter in Aquarius at 27 degrees near the end of the sign and that means that there is so much that we're aware of for Jupiter it's about expansion it's about wisdom it's about understanding it's about research it's about belief systems and in Aquarius what do we believe is best for everybody what do we believe in that can help us unite what is, what does that look like for each and every one of us so if we sit and contemplate that the late degrees say look back look where you've been it's really important and there's a lot of wisdom that you have to draw upon and then we also have Neptune at 22 degrees of Pisces and by 2024 Neptune is going to be moving into Aries and you know that's going to be a big shift when you have these outer planets the far away planets um, at near the end of a degrees uh, the degrees of a particular sign it means it's a time of completion a time of endings and um, one thing historically I do know about Neptune when it moved into Aries throughout history we did have civil war and so you know that's going to be for another show that I record but uh, Neptune is about us having compassion for each other but when it's in a negative aspect to any planet are not having a nice conversation it influences suffering deception confusion and also escapism when things are really hard people tend to the first human 3d experience is to run and hide or to find something to make ourselves feel better whether it be a band-aid whether it be a drug whether it be alcohol and um, but the thing that's happening with Neptune presently is that we are becoming even more sensitive. So it's really important for us to look at the things that we can use to help ourselves to set up healthy boundaries. What are the things out in the world that can help us to walk through, not run from, but walk through experiences with, with strength and courage. So, um, you know, 
I would have to say that there is a lot of things that on this full moon that are going to be um, required for us to make adjustments to. And spirituality, gathering together with people of like mind, because this uh, full moon has a yod right to it. A yod is a finger of God. It means, in Hebrew, it means a finger of God. And whenever you see this in a chart, it means that there is there is a level of conflict in the outside world. So we need to go inward to make our adjustments. And this full moon is going to really inspire that for us. Scorpio is the detective. It's the investigator. It's the one that understands the processes of life and death, the processes of change and transformation. So um, I think that the, a really good message on this full moon is to um, think about how you can act in a kind way. I love that song, Humble and Kind by Tim McGraw. And that's actually a motto that I live my life by. Um, if I can't respond to somebody with kindness, I'm going to step back and think carefully before I, you know, until I can do that with healthy boundaries. So everyone, I'm going to move on now to the uh, horoscope for the full moon for Sagittarius rise. And again, if you want to create your birth chart, you'll need your time of birth. But if you go to turn to the stars.com and click on create free birth chart, which is Whoa, I just had a visitor here. I'm at the villages where I live in uh, Florida in Sumter Landing recording. It's, it's just so nice to be at the lake. And I just had a, a little bird visit me. That was pretty cool. Anyway, so Sagittarius. Um, <laughs> uh, Sagittarius, if you have Sagittarius ruling your chart, um, Sagittarius rising, Sagittarius ascendant, then this uh, th this full moon is going to be one that inspires you to uh, dive deeply into areas where you can have time to yourself, time to reflect, time to pray, time to meditate, because that is where you're going to find the answers. This full moon is illumin illuminating the 12th house of this chart, which is the unseen, the unknown. It's a place where you know, um, energy, whatever the emotions and feelings that you have that you feel um, you have not taken time to find peace with, this would be a great time to do that because the sun, Uranus and Venus and Mercury are all in the sixth house of this chart, meaning that there's a lot of energy around your work, your day-to-day -day life. Your, the materials that you're using, the values that you have that are associated with your health, your well-being, with um, whatever it is that you're doing that you're in service to the world in your life on a day-to-day -day basis. So there is this huge level of awareness that this full moon is bringing you in that particular area. And it's going to be really important that you think very carefully um, before you respond because it's we're at a place in our evolution here on earth where we're recognizing the old patterns the old things that we've acted on and how we've acted on them and what does that look like and do we want to continue with that same pattern or can we stop and see that this is not a healthy way? Maybe this is something there's more, you know, there's more out there that you may want to go and research and look into. Because the North Node here, again, um, in this chart, it's in the seventh house. So personal relationships, do some research into, um, what you can do to be more diplomatic, what you can be, do to be more um, aware of both sides of the things that are going on in your life. But also, you know, it's really important with Gemini. Gemini is a, a very social type of energy. It's a energy that includes us to really get, be trapped in our minds. But I was explaining this to a client the other day as I began studying astrology 23 years ago, I first 
learned how to interpret my birth chart and I'm still learning more and more and more. There's always something new, new to find or discover by examining your birth chart. And I'm a Gemini. And so the most mundane influences or reactions from the Gemini energy is one that is quick, quick, quick to respond without thinking. And um, there's a duality about this sign. And the duality is, is that, you know, um, for me, I see it when I'm really tired, that that's the time I need to put one foot on the ground and connect up to the most lighted source of energy, because primarily that is the most esoteric, the most evolved um, uh, expression of Gemini. Because Gemini can also be a lot of chatter, a lot of noise, and we certainly have that going on in, in the news. And um, and but we don't really know what is the truth that we're hearing on the news. But as I was saying with Gemini, Gemini can be very easily confused because what about this? What about that? It's a mutable sign, so it's really important for us to seek healthy avenues and resources for how we can. Um, maneuver through personal relationships, marital relationships, business relationships. And so the animal card or nature's wisdom for you, Sagittarius, rise on this full moon is the ladybug. So this is a good time of good fortune and abundance. So be willing to receive all good things in your lives. And one, one of the things I would have to say about that is if you're holding on to the past or negativity, your heart is not open to receive new things, new, you know, uh, new levels of, of appreciation or things that are really important. So if you find yourself in that mode, uh, thinking about the past and all the things you've lost and you know allowing yourself to sink into that that is going to deter you from receiving the, all the abundance that is right with you and in front of you so um, Sagittarius that's your message for the uh, full moon in Scorpio your horoscope and so now I'm going to move on to Capricorn Capricorn uh, Capricorn rise Capricorn and ascendant here is your horoscope for the full moon in Scorpio. And this full moon is taking place actually in the 10th house of this chart, which is your career, what you're noticed for, what you're recognized for. So something there is being illuminated in your life and you're going through a very powerful transformation. So, so important Capricorn Rise that you open your heart get out of your mind open your heart to the new not the old and but you know the the thing that's really cool about this full moon is that it is trining mars so there is a level of compassion and understanding and nurturance that's coming from the people that surround you and uh, the relationships in your life so that is a really great um support You've got support coming from Mars, meaning that um, other people's actions are going to be, and they're, and they're, what they're doing, where they're putting their time, is going to be very helpful to you on an emotional level. They're going to be a level of understanding, a level of help if you ask for it. And the primary focus for you on this full moon is your work what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. This is a great time where you could receive lots of information, um, lots of knowledge of how to perfect things in your life. And what's really neat about this, um, about this full moon for you, Capricorn Rise, is that there's a grand chine in air. So you're gonna get lots of ideas lots and lots of ideas keep your diary next to you so you can make notes um and because gemini the ideas come and they go so it's an air sign so you're going to need to write down those things so that you don't forget about them so the um a lot of energy here around family creativity your home environment and also though money values 
your sense of worth. This is a time where you need, it would be, I highly suggest you be aware of how you're thinking about your values, how you're thinking about your own sense of worth and that you're letting go of the things that seem to pull you down and looking to the future. You know, late at night is a time where I have trouble staying positive. So that's when I, I go, okay, time to shut it all off. Time to do a meditation or a journey or maybe just quiet my mind. Um, so this for you, Capricorn Rise, is primarily um, very important with the ideas. There's, there's this great flow of energy, this great energy that's highly supportive of invention and and you know bringing that to the the workplace and seeing what that looks like and how you can move forward with that so uh capricorn the animal card nature's wisdom ooh, is the rattlesnake and like i was saying before this is a great time of change and transformation the end of a phase and the beginning of a new phase in your life so the experiences that you're presently going through are an initiation into fulfilling your purpose as a healer. So um, whatever it is that you're experiencing right now is very powerful because that's the message from the snake that you're, you're wiggling through a time of transformation, that you are very powerful and to stand strong in your power during this time. So now I'm going to move on to um, the horoscope for Aquarius. And Aquarius, uh, Aquarius rising sign, Aquarius ascendant. Uh, if Aquarius is ruling your chart, this is going to be, um, this full moon is actually taking place in the ninth house of this chart. So it's illuminating your beliefs. It's illuminating knowledge which is beyond what you have already so perhaps you are able to identify on this full moon a course of study that you would love to get involved with and so you're supported and that's where this light is shining brightly for you you know scorpio again is the the detective and so this emotionally we're all going to be inspired to dig deep to find that pearl at the bottom of the lake or the bottom of the ocean, so to speak, in our emotional makeup. So um, the primary focus for you, Aquarius Rise or Aquarius Ascendant, is um, going to be on your family, your children, your children, your family, your creative expression, your roots, you know, the things that you learned as a child, the things that uh, you were taught and so this is very focused on family home parents mothering nurturance and so I think that the message here that's really powerful is to sit and listen to each other listen to your family mem mem uh, members communicate with them um, there again there is a yard that is happening with this full moon and that yard part of that yard is going to uh chiron the wounded healer in the second house of this chart so security is going to be an area where there could be uh, conflict where you need to make adjustments in order to resolve that conflict um areas of family and emotionally and it may have to do with belief systems so um the animal card nature's wisdom for aquarius rise for this uh, full moon is manatee and the message is accept the situation as it is rather than fighting to change it so whatever it is that's happening if you try to fight it it's going to be so much harder if you go with the flow of it and accept the change it's going to be a lot easier for you um, so you know Aquarius is a fixed sign and you're one you're a very strategic sign and you're always you know there's a humility about Aquarius and uh, 
and but there's also Aquarius doesn't like change because it likes to you know I know this already I really don't think there's any more to it but I used to tell my daughter all the time bringing her up because she's an Aquarius if you and I can talk about this and I can share what I know with what you know I think we're all gonna know a lot more so that is your horoscope for Aquarius for this full moon and now we're moving on to Pisces rise. Pisces is ruling your chart. Pisces is on the horizon at the time of your birth. So uh, this full moon is going to be in the eighth house of this chart. And Pisces, you're the compassionate sign, the kind, uh, understanding. Um, there's no boundaries for you. You do anything to help others. There's a, such a uh, a gentleness, um, such a sweetness about Pisces, but there also can be, uh, Pisces rise can be one that wants to escape from things because they are very difficult. Um, so it's really important to be aware of what, what's healthy and what's not on this full moon. And um, also, the full moon is going to be in the eighth house of this chart so that means that there's a lot of people around you that are going through times of great change emotionally in their life maybe they're letting go of something that's not healthy anymore and they're wanting to know uh what is it that's what is it that's causing me to um behave like i have in the past this full moon is gonna be really great for those people in your life that are searching for those answers. Scorpio is a very strong sign. And so um, it does bring a strength of uh, staying power, but also strength to um, change or transform like we saw with the rattlesnake. But this is primarily, there's a lot of people around you that maybe their values are a little bit mixed up maybe they're um, going through something physically that they're having to work through maybe they're going through something emotionally that they're having to work through one thing to know about this full moon all full moons that emotion is peaked on full moons people are more apt to respond very quickly very impulsively so that's a big red flag caution caution if you're feeling that um, you know, uh, Scorpio can also be a sign that can be very vengeful or very secretive. So this is going to be very powerful you Pis for you, Pisces Rise, because of the people that you're surrounded by that are in a place of making adjustments in their life um, with conflicts that they do have with their family, conflicts that they have personally, um, with things that they've acted on that were uh, cause pain to them personally so um, the nature's uh, message for you Pisces rise is the meerkat get support from a trusted group of like-minded friends that means that you will do so much better if you have support don't take this on all by yourself if you're going through a lot because somebody in your life is going through a lot you also need support so you know we're all human so the mirror cat is standing up straight and he's looking and he's going it's like a deer with headlights you know <laughs> so um this i think this full moon is going to bring a huge awareness to you of um what you're meant to control and what you're not what you're meant to stand by somebody for for support and what you're not so the mirror cat Remember the meerkat as this full moon energy comes in. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to Aries rise, Aries ascendant, Aries ruling your birth chart. And so Aries, you're the go-getter of the zodiac. You're the one that on a mundane level or more 3D level is engaging your foot before your mind. But esoterically, engaging the mind before the foot is is actually going to serve you way better so um, Aries rise you have actually um, a cardinal square here going on so it's really important that you take your time and be very aware of your actions and 
Am I doing this to control others? Am I doing this because I want to uh, fix something for someone else? Am I doing this because I um, have something inside me that needs to do this? This is a challenging cardinal uh, T-square. So I would say to be very careful, very cautious of the actions that you take, especially surrounding your family especially surrounding you personally, especially surrounding where you are when you go to work every day, um, the people that you're interacting with. What are you responsible for and what are you not responsible for? And this full moon is, a, is also for you very much associated with um, a lot of change and transformation that's around you, um, especially in the area of other people's money, other people's values. So uh, your primary focus should be on this uh, full moon is to communicate. Um, this is a great time for you to do some um, local research, so to speak. Um, this is a great time for contracts, agreements, a great time to be having conversations with your friends, with your siblings, with your relatives, um, because you've got a lot of support from Saturn. Saturn is a planet of discipline, of um, realizing what your abilities are that you've worked so hard to uh, build during the course of your life. So communication is key for you, Aries Rise. And nature's message for you on this full moon is the Kiwi. And the Kiwi, the message from the Kiwi is do a walking meditation each day for the next week. And that would be if there's something that you are frustrated about as this full moon comes on the 26th, the 27th, the energy is going to be very powerful, you know, surrounding this full moon time. And, you know, uh, do a walking meditation each day for the next week while this full moon energy is coming in. It's going to help you to release frustrations rather than acting out on them and maybe doing something that you'll regret later on. Um, your primary focus at this time, as I said earlier, is communication. Communication is key for you right now. All right, so let's move on to um, Taurus. Your uh, horoscope, Taurus rise, Taurus ascendant, uh, if Taurus is ruling your birth chart. And again, if you want to create your birth chart, you don't know um, what is on the horizon of your earth, of, of the earth or of your birth chart at the time of your birth, you could go on my website on Turn to the Stars and on the menu bar it says create free birth chart. And if you put your uh, month, your day, your year of birth, your time of birth, your city and state of birth, and then uh, go and create that chart, you're going to see right here on your chart this is what we call the ascendant or the rising sign as you can see here it's taurus on this chart and so uh, you're going to find out what uh what sign is there and you can also do a research do some search on google to see what each sign zodiac sign symbol is so this is taurus and so it's it's a great um it will help you because these horoscopes are designed around what's on the ascendant or on the horizon of the earth. So, um, Taurus, this full moon for you is going to be in the seventh house. So it's illuminating. It's shining light on personal relationships. A lot of emotion is going to be present around personal relationships and uh, business relationships. And it can also be formidable foes. The seventh house also rules, rules that. It rules the lower courts also, like domestic things. And so this full moon is, um, you know, I think the test, the challenge, what's coming up for you to overcome is the being aware of the way that you used to react to personal relationships or respond. Is this the right thing for me? Or maybe do I need to let that go and just accept things the way they are right now and figure out what is the gem in this experience? 
what is the good I can take away from this? You're, you're a very slow, stable, steady sign. And one that is, um, you know, in a mundane sense, you can be long suffering because of holding on to things that you won't let go of. And so um, this fixed T-square that we see happening here does indicate that there's gonna be some things regarding your reputation what you're known for, what you're doing for work that are gonna come up. There's gonna be changes happening. And your primary focus should be around this full moon being focused on your values. What is the knowledge you have that you value? What are the um, you know, uh, memories that you have that you value? These will help, this, this will help you through this time. And nature's message for you on this full moon is the panda. And the panda's message is create a sacred space for yourself in your home and or place of work. And so what that means is that if you take some time, create a place, you know, make sure you, you know, you're cleaning it all up, organizing it, maybe set yourself, you know, things that you like in that area um, or candles or incense, whatever it is nice music a comfortable place to sit to read um it's just basically i think that this is saying that you need a time out the world is a, a little bit much right now and and not everything is black and white <laughs> sometimes it is black and white but maybe right now it's not so black and white so you need that sacred space to go to find that sense of peace so um, now we're moving on to Gemini rise. Gemini ruling your chart. And uh, this full moon, you know, you're one of the most adaptable signs of the zodiac Gemini. You're always wanting everybody to be happy. You're the social light, the social butterfly. Very smart, very intelligent, and always want to share your knowledge with the world. And so on this full moon, um, there's going to be a highlight around your health, around what you're doing on a day-to-day -day ba -day basis. This full moon is illumining this area of your life. Maybe that you need to spend some time with your, your, your pets. Maybe that you need to spend some time um, analyzing things in your life, breaking them, them down, analyzing and see where they fit. And certainly with this fixed T-square, which is very connected with the ninth house, um, with Saturn and all of that energy in the 12th house, um, which is the unknown, the unseen, meaning energy that we can't see on the surface. Um, there are some things here that is, this full moon is highlighting, illuminating, showing you what it wants you to show. You know, our solar system, our universe that we are a part of is very very wise if we are able to sit and listen and reflect and hear those messages and so i think for you gemini as much as you want to be going here going there this might be a great time for you to find some peace with yourself and your connection here on this earth and our creator um a time for prayer a time for meditation and so I'm gonna uh, pull an uh, animal card as for your message um, for this uh, full moon in Scorpio and so the card is the dog and this is very true for um, for Gemini oftentimes you have uh, you spread your energy so thin and the message is here is your loyalty and faithfulness is misplaced by serving too many masters so it's really important that you uh, be aware of where you're spending your energy and your primary focus should be on gathering information gathering knowledge you know doing some reading doing some research of some self-help tools some things that can help you with your personal development. That's what's gonna be illuminated on this full moon for you. Um, so now we're gonna move on to Cancer.
this full moon and you know cancer you're the caregiver of the zodiac the doctors the nurses the nurturers the ones that have a great compassion for people and it is a much more reserved sign so we're going to see a certain reservation on this full moon that is comes up for you and um, there's a lot of energy in this chart what's being illuminated on this full moon is is the fifth house of your chart and that is children your creative expression and identifying the things that you've created and that are so special to you and may, maybe writing a story um sitting down and getting those feelings and these emotions out is going to be really helpful and it might be something that you end up sharing with the world or sharing in a group at some point but this is really important that you recognize hey maybe i am not honoring myself for all the things that i've created so maybe this is a great time for you to look back over things and to do sort of like uh, dusting and cleaning and and look at all the material that you have that you've um you know what is it that you've learned what is it that you've um really done well with and so you know i did that and i've been doing that a lot lately because i have forgotten over the you know 23 years all the different things i've created and i know they're so valuable because uh you know they, they were valuable to me. They helped me very much. And I've taught workshops and, and things like that. And I've, I've, I've kind of not, I've not uh, recognized those or I've put them away and forgotten about them. So really important for you, Cancer, on this full moon to do a, um, do some research, do some digging, so to speak, into those things that you've created because they are special. And your primary focus at this time w will be to do some um, inner exploration, spend some time alone when you need it, um, so that, that all that mind chatter is not the, the guide that is guiding you on your path, but get in touch with your heart because your heart is gonna always steer you right. Our mind can really confuse us. It can really, you know, the monkey mind can be, uh, the thing that causes a, a lot of anxiety and a lot of worry. So if you find you're in that place, it's time to go and sit by yourself. Time to do something that is going to help you um, to shift gears, so to speak. Nature's wisdom for you on this, and we can always pause that and cut it out and edit. So, okay, we'll cut that out. Okay. So the message for you, um, the animal wisdom for you on this full moon is the snow leopard. And we were just talking about this. Take some time out of your usual life and spend it in solitude. And it's going to be something that catapults you forward, as you can see the snow leopard doing. So um, now we're going to move on to Leo. Leo, your horoscope for this full moon that's coming on uh, April 26 is uh, the message for you that where what's going to be highlighted, what's going to be illuminated in your life is your home, your family, your roots, your domestic property, um, things that you care deeply about, things that support you, that provide you with shelter and uh, so there's there's some adjustments that are going to come up for you leo and i know leo leo is a very proud sign it's a very dignified sign it's a very bright sign it's one that that enjoys you know laughter and fun and games and um this full moon here is actually going to be one that may slow you way down because there's so much going on around you. Beware of things that you're trying to control that you uh, really, that it, and it's not in your best interest. So the primary focus for you, to, for you on this full moon is your friends, your community, doing what's right for the whole, the collective. Meaning, what are your goals? Are they in alignment with the world? 
are they in alignment with uh, what you had for you know foresight or insight into? Um, there's going to be a lot of benefits by getting connected to your community, to different groups that um, you can socialize with. So that's going to be uh, one of the primary areas. Your, you know, the. I think your awareness of your home and your career, your career in your home and your responsibilities there and the changes that are happening are going to be very highlighted on this full moon. And the animal wisdom for you, oh, we got the tortoise again. You're too fragmented. So do whatever it takes to get grounded. So perhaps you um, are doing some things that you think are fun and maybe they're not healthy fun. So that may be a huge uh, area that gets illuminated on this full moon for you. All right, so let's move on to Virgo. Virgo on the horizon, uh, Virgo ruling your birth chart. Virgo, you're the worker bee, the one that, you know, slowly looks at things, breaks them down and says, what, what, what is it about this that I am not able to um, identify? So you spend time identifying details, break things down, analyzing them, and seeing where they fit. You're the analyzer of the zodiac. And so this full moon for you is in the third house of your mind, your thoughts, your ideas. And it's also associated with neighbors, um, it's also associated with contracts and agreements and primarily, so there's going to be a lot of emotion around things in your environment, things that are said, things that are talked about, um, possibly with relatives. And there may be a level of opposition. Um, and opposition raises our awareness of differences of our differences with each other in the world. But it also, oppositions can also bring us together if everybody's willing to give, if everybody's willing to meet halfway. There used to be a song I used to listen to by the Green Eyed Peas. I think it was the Green Eyed Peas. It was Meet Me Halfway. And I love that song because it's so true. In relationships, if we can't meet each other halfway, if we can't say, okay, maybe that's okay for you and it's not okay for me, so we agree to disagree, or maybe we agree, we can both at least meet each other halfway and agree that your opinion is okay for you, my opinion is okay for me, and then we learn something through each other in that experience. So your primary focus should be on your career, what you're doing out in the world. Um, this is a great time for looking at what your responsibilities are. What is it that you want to build? really putting your energy into that Virgo right now is going to be very, very fulfilling. And um, you may want to be very careful around responding too quickly through emotion, especially with people that you're working with, especially when it comes to uh, different beliefs. Um, maybe you have a different education or a different philosophy. This is a time of recognizing what those differences are and making the adjustments in order to um, keep, think, keep the peace. And I, I think we all could use a little bit of that in this world right now. And the animal card or nature's wisdom for you, Virgo, on this full moon is the honeybee. Let compassion and forgiveness be your top priority in any situation. So that's one of the big things about a fixed T-square is forgiveness. Remembering that we're all human. We all make mistakes. Um, and even if you don't want somebody in your life because their choices are not um, healthy in your eyes, it's okay to forgive them because when you forgive someone else and you let it go, it takes a huge weight off your shoulders. And because not forgiving somebody can really make you sick. And so if you can at least find peace with them on an ethereal level and just let it go, let them go and 
put them in, you know, put that whole situation in God's hands. It's going to be a lot more healthy for you. So let's go now to Libra. Libra, um, the ascendant of your chart, or Libra ruling your chart. This is your horoscope for this full moon in Scorpio. And this full moon again is on April 26. And so the this full moon is in the second house of your chart. That means that there is going to be a, an illumination by this full moon um, of your money, meaning that there's there's this light that's shining on your money, on your values, on your own self-esteem, your own sense of worth. And so there's going to be a lot of valuable things that are going to be recognized by this full moon. Like I said, Scorpio is the detective. So this is the area that's highlighted for you. And, um, you know, the uh, opposing energy that is in this chart or the connecting energy, so to speak, um, where we can see likeness with others and dislikes, um, differences and common strings that attach us these are what oppositions bring up for us is that there there's going to be people in your life and there's going to be triggers on this full moon with other people that are very stuck in their way in their like this is mine this is I own this and I'm going to hold on to it rather than, you know, I think that the most evolved um, Taurus, Capricorn, Virgo, um, you're all the earth signs of the zodiac. The most evolved um, energy uh, that's associated with the earth signs is one that says, I've got all this material. How can I help someone else with what I have? How can I teach someone else how to use this to make a difference in the world? So there's a lot of highlight around your money, your values versus other people's money, other people's values, um, what other people are going through, what you're going through. So it's really important. Your primary focus ought to be on getting to the truth of things, doing research into what is the answer here? What is the truth? What is just, what is right, what is fair? So the um, nature's wisdom for you on this uh, Libra uh, ascendant on this full moon is the blue heron. Make a stand for what you believe in and do what feels right in spite of any judgment or disapproval from others. So, you know, Libra, you're the sign of the zodiac that has a really hard time making decisions because you're always weighing things out is this going to be, you know, how are we going to cross this bridge? And it's an air sign. All the air signs, you know, typically have a harder time making decisions. So um, make a stand for what you believe in and do what feels right in spite of any judgment or disapproval from others. So um, let's move on now to Scorpio. Scorpio, I think, I think this is the last one here um, before the last horoscope for today's podcast. So Scorpio, you are, this full moon is going to be especially influential in your life because it's in your sign. So this is a great time for you to be that detective, to allow that innate emotional influence that, that is, is, is downloading to you at this time to have its way and to follow your intuition and to act on those things in a quiet way that you're not aware of. Act on the things to become aware of them so that, you know, that by, by that I mean do the research, do the investigation because you will find the answer. And this full moon is in the first house of your chart, which means that this is a very personal full moon for you and that there are things that are being illuminated um, in, in your life personally where you might be able to identify what changes you can take or make or proceed forward, forward with that will make a difference. So Scorpio, 
here's one of the things that I'm, I'm going to recommend to you because it's so easy for the fixed signs to be get, to get caught in fear. And as you know, I said that this is a fixed T-square um, that's happening with Saturn on this full moon. So there's going to be a level of awareness where things are stuck in personal relationships in your life meaning your marital relationships, your love relationships, your business relationships, and your feelings are gonna be very highlighted in these areas. And the most positive way that you can respond to this uh, level of opposition and challenge to let go of what was is by identifying everything about the relationships in your life that you appreciate that you're grateful for and maybe also identifying what you're not what you're not happy about because again this is an opposition it's raising your awareness of um, the people in your life and what their values are what your values are maybe there's some things about yourself that you can change in order to um, be a better partner or maybe there's some things about someone else's life or your partner's life that they can change to make a difference in your life and in your relationship the primary focus for you on this full moon is to reach out and communicate with people listen to other people when they're they have a story to tell you about something they're going through and maybe you can um, uh, make a recommendation or share something that you're doing that has helped you with that same type of experience That's going to be really important. So the Animal card or nature's wisdom for you Scorpio and this new moon is the zebra. We have another black and white um, animal and so let go of your fear and know that you are safe and protected at all times so fears are going to come up and but look look what's behind the zebra orange orange is enthusiasm orange is bright and it's it's also courage so i just had a, a intuitive uh thought that was you remember wizard of oz when the lion says um he got a heart for courage so I think that this full moon is giving you a heart to be courageous to walk through areas where you have fear and allow yourself to realize is this real or is this maybe a trigger or a reminder of the way something was in my life before and it's really not happening right now but I'm still holding on to it because of fear so the zebra trot forward and so there was one other thing I wanted to share with you um, on um, this full moon. A while back, I wrote um, a uh, focus, actually, as the, moon, as the moon moves through all the signs of the zodiac, um, there's different inspirations. So if you could, um, if you are aware or you can, you know, uh, get an astrology count, calendar you can follow the moon and here's what I want to share I wrote this uh, quite some time ago and it's actually kind of like a ruler to help you understand the energy influence when the moon is in each sign of the zodiac and so when the moon is in Aries so for instance Scorpio Scorpio full moon the influences are going to be very very big and very magnified and very lit up so there's Scorpio inspires detective work. It is helpful for us to identify fears, areas where forgiveness needs to happen. Meditation is great on a Scorpio moon. Music is helpful. Um, recognizing what others' values are is going to be brought up on this on when the moon is in Scorpio. It's a time of transformation. It's a time that you can shed your skin of old patterns. It's a time that you can meditate, do a shamanic journey, do some prayer work. Um, so I'm gonna put this actually up on my website for anyone who wants to see it, if you like to follow the path of the moon. Um, the moon does inspire our, you know, our reactions emotionally. It's the closest body to us here on earth.
Its transit is between Mars and the Earth and um, Venus and the Earth. And so because it's so close to us, its energy affects us. So as this full moon in Scorpio comes, all the things, all the topics I just went over um, are going to be highlighted. So again, I'm going to put this probably attached to the email I send out with this recording so that you, if you um, want to follow the path of the moon and have an idea of what might come up during that, the moon's uh, path through that particular zodiac sign, I think you might find that helpful. So everyone, thank you for tuning into the stars. And I want to tell you about one more thing that's happening at to, uh, Turn to the Stars. Um, on April 26 at 1 p.m., I have put together a panel of spiritual people, another astrologer, Will, who's going to join me, um, and also uh, a couple other spiritual advisors. We have Elizabeth Foley, who's a doctor of metaphysics, wonderful lady I've known for years. Uh, also Marcus Brown, who's a spiritual director. And then we also have um, uh, Ch uh, Chuck Mestith, who is a Native American and um, a powwow dancer and a very spiritual person who's gonna be joining the panel along with myself. And there may be a couple more that might be joining in, but this is gonna be a live Zoom, YouTube Q&A broadcast. And we'd love to have you join us. We're going to do uh, be joining together to bring some insight into the current state of humanity and where we're at in our evolution as we approach the end of the age of Pisces and begin to open our hearts to the age of Aquarius. So I want to say thank you to everyone tuning in today. Thanks for all your support and I'll see you next time and always remember turn to the stars and you'll find your answers there. Take good care.